Hello, I'm Daniela Mellon, and in today's video, I'm going to show a fun way to make a fabric embellishment that you could add to your slow stitching pieces. You could also turn this into something like fabric jewelry or an embellishment for a hat or something along those lines. But this is just a simple technique where you can create something if you have creative energy or if you want to add something unique to your slow stitching pieces. This is a fantastic way to use up scraps and to really emphasize your favorite colors. Now I use buttons on a few of these and I'll show you how I do that, but I also use stitches. I'll make little stitched hearts or stitched circles and it's kind of a fun effect. This way I can tailor it to a specific project or I can just create things as I like. So here are some examples of the little embellishments that we're going to make today. There are little variations to each and you can tailor it to what you like. You can do some stitching on each one or you can add a button. Add a little flower or a French knot. Here I have a little heart. I have a heart inside a stitched frame and a little star. So the choices are really endless. So to start my piece, I really basically do it in two moods. The first mood would be if I'm trying to match something or coordinate with an existing piece of stitching that I want to add this embellishment on, in which case I'll select my fabrics accordingly. And I like to choose two or three, sometimes even more of ones that I like. And sometimes I like to add a button or a bead. And I really just choose that based on the project and the colors of buttons if they inspire me and whatnot. The other way, the other mood that I'm in is I just have some creative energy that I want to burn and I want to create something with fabric. I just love the feel of it through my fingers. So I'll just choose some scraps that I have from my scrap pile and I'll look for things that either coordinate or are complementary to each other. I can even use the same fabric. I don't have to select different ones. But for today, I'm going to choose some blues here. I have my buttons. I have some, I have some blue thread. I have my fabric. Now this is a fun project that you can use regular fabric scissors or you can even use scalloped or pinking shears. Anything really goes here. The pinking shears prevent it from unraveling and the regular scissors what will give you a rough edge. I don't mind the rough edge. In fact, I kind of like the way it looks a little stringy at times. So what I want to do is just choose some fabric here that I want to use for my little embellishment. I'm going to actually stick with these blues and greens. So I'll get rid of the one piece and I have this here. I spend just a moment trying to figure out the order I want my pieces to be in. I can even play around a bit, just taking a moment to design what I'm looking for here. And I kind of like that. I'll start with my smallest piece or my largest piece, depending on what I'm making. Now I know with this one, I really like this center of it and I'm going to cut that fabric right out and I'm going to use my scallop shears to do that. So I'll just cut into it and create that center that I want. Roughly creating a circle. It's not going to be a perfect circle, just circular shaped. So I have the center to my piece. I'll set aside the remaining fabric because I'm not going to use that. And now what I like to do is I stack the remaining fabric together and I figure out roughly how large I want the largest circle to be. I use my little piece here that I use for my center as my guide and I'll just cut out the largest circle. I'll be a little generous on the circle because I can always cut it down and I can't reattach it. I would just cut another piece. So I'll move that fabric scrap aside and now just trim it down somewhat. Again, just playing with the shape. I'm not looking for a perfect circle here. So now I know because of the order that I put them in that this is going to be my largest circle and this is the smallest. I have my other two fabrics together and now I'm going to cut the next fabric size down. So I'm just going to shave off a little just around the edge, maintaining that shape. I can come in here and round it further and I have my next fabric circle ready to go. So now I have my last one here. Trim a little more off that piece. 
and then audition it and see. It's still a little big for my liking. So I'll just trim some of it down. And if this piece is too big, I can cut them all down even smaller. But I'm quite happy with the way that looks. So now at this point, I decide if I want to add a button or just stitch to attach it. So I can play around with some buttons here. That's kind of neat. I like that blue. This kind of gets lost in my mind. Or I can add multiple buttons. I think I'm going to go right with this bright blue, mainly because I'm quite partial to that color. And I'll just set it right in the middle. Before I attach the button though, I'm going to take my thread and just stitch one or two stitches to hold everything in place. It's not necessary, but it certainly makes it easier to work with. So I just make two stitches and I keep in mind that I want those stitches to be hidden when I put my button on, so I just keep them underneath here. Take that button, place it down where I want it, and just stitch that button. Now this is not going to get a lot of wear and tear. If it is, if I'm making it as a brooch or something that might get rub up against other clothing or be outside in the wind, I'll really stitch it down very securely. But I know I'm just going to use this in my slow stitching pieces. So I want it just to be secure, but it doesn't have to withstand wind or anything like this. So I have my piece here. I'll flip it over, not the back. And then clip my thread. So that's the basic technique for creating this little embellishment. So I've created a few with buttons using the same premise. This one I moved it to be off center. This one I just stitched the button right inside the different layers. For the remaining, I just did some stitching, whether it was a flower, a few hearts. And then for this one, I just turned it into little flowers by adding little shapes that resemble leaves. Then I can take my piece at some point and add it to my slow stitching projects. So it gives me a lot of options. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, and you create something, and you post it on social media, be sure to tag me. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more information. I post new videos every Monday and Wednesday. Thanks for joining me today.